guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled My Neighbor Thinks I'm Her Doorman. I, NB26, live on the ground floor of a block of flats that has a security door, so if you don't have a key, you need to be buzzed in. For the last month or so, one of my neighbors, F30s, on the top floor has lost her key and has still to replace it, so instead she presses my buzzer to be let in. The first couple of times she did it, I let her in because I hate the sound of the buzzer, when I have people over, I will go out just before they arrive and open the door so they don't need to buzz in, and to be somewhat neighborly. Well, this has now led to her pressing my buzzer every time that she wants to come back in. I've taken to ignoring her when she buzzes my door. It's not my fault she doesn't have a key and it's not my job to let people in. Because of this, she's taken to holding my buzzer in or pressing it several times before giving up and getting someone else to let her in. The other day, after having ignored her for about 5 minutes, she even came up to my living room window and looked in to see if she could spot me, and that was the last straw for me. The next night, I put up a sign saying that whoever was doing it, could they stop because it's not my job to be the doorman, and that set her off. She went outside and started shouting and swearing at my window. My blinds were down but some light from a lamp was bleeding through. That I wasn't being very neighborly and that I was purposefully leaving her outside in the cold, we live in Scotland and she chose to go out in just a jumper, and even lifted up my letterbox to moan at me when she did get in. About an hour ago, which prompted me to write this, she went out and started holding down my buzzer and moaning that I had to let her in because she was freezing. The next story is titled Sister Feels Entitled to Ruin My Wedding All Because of Rumors. Hope these fits, because my sister's an entitled idiot. So, it's the day of my sister's wedding, I turn up with my then fiancé, now wife, and throughout the whole shindigs everything went fine, or so I thought. A few days later my sister messages me saying I, ruined, her wedding. This includes my wife being argumentative with someone at the town hall where my sister was getting married. My wife is disabled so needs a wheelchair and although can walk, finds it difficult long distance and going upstairs so was debating out loud as to using the stairlift or not. Then at the reception my wife and I spent over 30 minutes in the toilets together. It wasn't 30 minutes but again, disabled, so it's going to take her longer than an able-bodied person. My wife kicked up a fuss about the food. She didn't, all she did was ask what was in the dessert to make sure it didn't contain anything she could be allergic to. My wife and I stole something from the wedding present table. All we touched was a box because there was a poem on the top and we wanted to read it properly. Apparently, it was my sister's partner's sister who told her all this, even though the only people near my wife and I whenever any of these events happened were my mum and a friend of my sister. Never came up to us to ask what's going on, especially if we're apparently meant to have stolen something. So, because of all this my sister told my wife's mum she was going to come to our wedding six months later and pretend to go into labor halfway through. Thankfully we never told her where we were getting married, and it was entertaining to say the least. I do have another tale about my sister if anyone wants to hear it. The next story is titled Entitled Woman Gets Child Support from Someone That Is Not The Father. I made a reply to another post about a guy being shamed by his family for not paying child support on a child that was proven not to be his. I have been messaged by many people to post about it and give an update. Court was several days ago but due to some personal family issues, the holiday, and work, I haven't had the time to do so until now. My husband has a friend that has been court ordered to pay child support for a child that is not his, has a father that is involved and pays child support. Mother has been double dipping because a judge decided to ignore laws and deem that friend should be paying child support because the child was accustomed to a higher standard of living due to friend's financial contribution to the household prior to the mother deciding to break things off and move out. He had continued to help her financially because he still had feelings and she was leading him on that they could maybe work things out. When he realized she was leading him on, he started dating his current girlfriend and stopped his financial aid. She lost her mind filed for child support and the judge agreed it was in the best interest of the child to grant her petition. This judge has since been removed from her post as a judge and is working as an advising lawyer in her family firm, which also now has a bad reputation due to her. He won, technically. 
The mother is ordered to repay him for three years of child support. He paid $150 a week for just a little over three years. She is to repay him at the whooping amount of $25 per week via wage garnishment because she made it abundantly clear in court, she will not willingly pay him back. She will be paying this back for years due to interest and in the yearly court fees. His attorney has advised him to wait one year, and they can file for an amendment to put liens on any property she owns and possibly against any tax refunds she might get. He does not really feel like he won considering how long it will take her to pay him back and the fact that he will probably be chasing her for years to get his money. The next story is titled AMI the a-hole for not letting the police and neighbors use my driveway. Going to begin with saying that legally I am in the clear. It's my property and I can do as I wish with it. I bought a piece of land and had a house built on it recently. There was a gravel road, now paved, that has become my driveway. I guess before I lived there the locals used it to get around faster. I've been told that if they can't use my driveway, it makes the travel 15 minutes longer. This started when I moved in. The stuff like the yard and surrounding area was not finished but it was complete enough to move in. My driveway is long and can be exited or entered from two sides. With how the house is built for them to use my driveway as a shortcut a lot of traffic would pass right by my house and cars every day. This isn't just people driving. People on bikes and walkers want to use it too. I simply do not want the whole town driving through my driveway every day. I realized it was a problem when I moved in and could constantly hear cars driving through all hours of the night. Or voices of people talking and people walking right past the cars. I understood that this property was vacant for a while, so I put up signs saying that this is private property. You can clearly see a house there and I'm sure they saw it being built. No change. So, I put up gates that only me and my wife have access to. It doesn't deter the walkers, but I have plans for that. This caused a big fuss. I've had numerous people knock on my door asking why I put a gate up. Saying they will be late to work or school. I had a guy say I made him late to an interview. I just tell everyone that this is private property and that this house didn't just appear here. You saw it built. You saw the signs if this were a route you use daily. Apparently, the police used this as a speed trap area, and I've had police ask me to open the gates. I tell them no. My wife normally is the type to let people use the driveway, but this wasn't normal. Imagine the whole town using it like a shortcut. There was so much traffic constantly. The first complaint I got before the gates were up when I parked my car on the driveway and not on the part in front of my house. Because it was, blocking the traffic. I responded, the traffic of my property? I've had cops tell me I am obstructing their work. My direct neighbors understand but town people are just upset that their shortcut is gone. They are pretty upset about the house being here altogether. People would park their cars all over the driveway and my property during sport events, high school football is important around here. I'm not trying to be an evil neighbor. Am I the a-hole? Comment said not the a-hole it's your property and they can't use it anymore. They will just have to get used to going the long way around. If the locals wanted this, road, so much then they should have had the town purchase the land and made it a public road. They didn't, now they have to deal with it. Another comment said not the a-hole I would also be concerned about liability. What if there was an accident on your driveway? Someone could potentially sue you. If you've not done so already, I would post, private property, all over and follow through with your plans for the walkers, which I'm curious about. Eventually people will get used to it. The next story is titled Petite Revenge on a Plane When Hassled by French Speakers. I was on a long business trip to Vietnam from Paris and most of the other passengers were heading to a major international francophone conference in Hanoi, where French is still spoken due to the colonial history. My seat was by the window, one I'd paid early for, as it suits me best for getting a bit of sleep as jet lag can be a problem in meetings. On returning to my seat after my first trip to the toilet my place had been taken. I politely asked the man in my seat if I could have my seat back, in English and then in my rusty, but understandable French, and both times he pretended not to understand and just grunted, giving a Gallic shrug. Not that it needed language. We both knew what was happening. So, I asked a passing stewardess if she could explain to him. He moved but made a great show of reluctance and anger. After that, he and his colleague did all they could to make me uncomfortable. Refusing to let me out of my seat, for instance, pretending not to understand. The flight was many hours, and twice a steward had to tell them to move to let me out for a trip to the loo. 
Then I spotted something on my menu. It was printed in both Vietnamese and French. But there was something odd about the words petit déjeuner. On close examination, there was a very small very discreet sticker over it. Someone had gone to considerable painstaking lengths to cover it up. And I could guess why. Peeling it off, I saw the word backquote breakfast. This would have deeply offended a French speaker's sensibilities. I spent the rest of my flight picking up every stack of menus on each divider on each section of the plane and hiding what I did them back at the seat. Everyone around me noticed but had no idea what was happening just that I was acting weird with the menus, then returning them. Finally, with all around watching me intently, near the end of the flight, I held the last menu up so my fellow passengers could see and made a point of peeling it off and then they realized. Every menu now said backquote breakfast. The next story is titled going to fire someone over a pumpkin, well you can have your damn pumpkin. My mom is very well skilled in gardening, native plants, and ornamental plants. And got a job at a local nursery. She absolutely loved it and was good at it. But there was one problem, the owner. Now we live in a southern town, the owner was a local small business owner of the nursery and a restaurant. Her daddy was very well known in the area, as he had a lot of money. But she was cray. One day she would be sicky sweet, you know the, bless your heart, type. The next day she would be losing her mind screaming at them, throwing things, damaging products. I am mad at my mom for not recording the discussion about illegal overtime practices. As when someone worked overtime, she always made them to put it on the next time sheet. And there were more than just these incidents. Anyway, it was right before Halloween. The owner approaches my mom and tells her she wanted an anchor carved into a pumpkin. My mom had no tools for that, didn't even have a knife. So, she just politely asked, okay, what should I use to do that? The owner told her to figure it out and stormed off. My mom gets her co-worker to help her find something. But they couldn't find anything that would work. So, the co-worker approached the owner and asked again about tools. Well, this finally set her off, the owner started screaming about insubordinates. She starts ranting about doing it herself, beginning to grab pumpkins dropping some of them even breaking some. She goes inside and rants to the manager, also her friend. The manager makes an appearance and lectures them about how they should not have an attitude with the owner. And that they just need to do what she says no matter what. That if they didn't have tools then they should have gone out and purchased the tools. They tried to explain their side, but it was no use. My mother basically said, well, I didn't have an attitude then, but I do now. Next day my mom comes into work, and the display that she had designed for the front of the business had been completely torn down. She was upset because she worked hard on it, but she decided she wouldn't say anything. Later she was sat down by the owner and basically told so that what she did was insubordinates. And that with the attitude she has the owner didn't believe she would be a good fit for there anymore. My mother was very upset and messaged me. I was enraged. But then she texts me, do you know anywhere that's still selling pumpkins? Unfortunately, the nursery was the only one still selling pumpkins after Halloween. But since my mother worked there, I happened to know that they had no security. I also happened to know when no one was there. And the owner did ask her to carve one of their pumpkins. So, I went ahead and snagged one on my way home one day. And my mother decided to return her keys in a perfectly carved pumpkin. She said the look on the owner's face as she had to get her crap together and politely say it was nice working with you was enough for her. Pick of carved pumpkin linked below. Did a drive-by after she dropped it off. Smashed out back, totally worth it. The next story is titled Some of the stupidest complaints I have read in reviews at hotels I have been at. Sometimes people are just miserable human being and when they are miserable, they like to make others' lives miserable. So I was reading some reviews, and just remembering some from old hotels I worked at, and how they embellish or plain and simply make crap up. What are some of your stupid, embellished or made-up complaints? One guest complained that the girl at the desk was making out with her boyfriend and ignoring the guests checking in. The truth, FDA checked guest in, was super pleasant, saw one of the knock come in for shift change and he looked upset so she gave him a hug then they went to work. Meanwhile all the guests were checked in and nobody was waiting for service at the desk. Management verified this with cameras. A long-term guest on a very low company rate, like $80 less than walk-in, was upset about his billing, so he took it out on the FDA. He literally said, you want to know why I have not been here, it's because it was you. You caused problems for me last time I was here too. 
Then he complained about all the new staff yet the FDA he yelled at has been there seven years. The truth. He is paying $79 for a hotel that is at $159 for walk-in and the busiest hotel in the area. The reason he was not here for two years is that he does construction and did not have any business in the city as business were not building during the pandemic. Guest complained right after check-in that room smelled, offered room move or cancellations from third party with no penalty and guest had FDA come to the room anyways. Guest stated, you must be used to it because you are here all the time. And still offered to waive cancellation instead of fighting with guest. The FDA that checked the room only covers shortage on schedule so he is not there all the time and, used, to the smell. The truth. Room did not have a smell, after a tidy up after they left, resold the room and no complaint from the next guests in the room. Guests still left an online complaint despite being wrong. So many more but so little time, I will update when I have time later. What are some of your bullcrap complaints? The next story is titled Isn't It Always Something? Last year it was our one large residential grade water heater out. Or our normal sized two washers or two dryers going out. Or our power going out for a full day three times so far this year. Or the night in January where they were here without notice all night replacing a utility pole and our power was out. Or just this last week when we had our water main break. Today a guest walks up and is like, there doesn't seem to be any hot water. Of course I told him to run it for a minute to get the hot to them, and he said he did that. So I ran through my diagnosis steps. Check the water in the closest tap by the water heaters, right in housekeeping. No luck. I'm thinking the water heaters are super new so it can't be them, are we just out of propane? I go look at the huge tank and yup looks like it says zero. My GM is hospitalized, and I'm usually his daytime relief so I don't know what the story is or should be for propane deliveries, so I text the owner. Sounded like he might have tried our supplier a few times but finally got someone on the phone and they have an emergency delivery vehicle for just these situations and maybe by later today. Also it turns out that we are actually a month late for that delivery. Sometimes being rural is absolutely ridiculous. But there's always something going wrong. Maybe the ice machine or a few of our AC, heat wall units are due to break? If you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.